Hey everyone, James Toomey from Black Sun Valley Tourism Council, and I am here with David Lawler, who is a professional photographer and drone photographer. And we are here today to talk to you about fall photos in Blackstone Valley. The leaves are just starting to change, and we want you to come out and take some of the best photos you can here in the valley with us. So Dave is gonna share some tips on where to go and what gear to use. So yeah, I mean, to start off, Dave, like you've got your hands held, where should people go here in Blackstone Valley? Yeah, Blackstone River State Park. One yeah. of my first choices. Um, cool. And that's in Lincoln, right? Yep. Right along the Blackstone River, obviously. Exactly, yeah. Uh, great spot. You have a lot of different opportunities. You have the dam going up north. You have the park, Kelly House, um, and then the rest of the park. Um, mm -hmm. I highly recommend that. You have Ashton Mill right over there. Mm -hmm. Great spot to grab some scenic photographs. Um, you can even go on the 116 George Washington Bridge, get some shots oh, right, looking down. Yeah. At Ashton Mill, uh, highly recommend that spot. Uh, another place that I like to go to for like handheld photos is Albion Dam. Yeah. Because I do a lot of long exposure photographs during the day and nighttime. Mm -hmm. uh, during the day, I have like ND filters, um, and I'm able to capture that dam yeah, during okay. the foliage at its like best time, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Um, which is a lot of fun. Um, even also just like all the dams, yeah. um, you're gonna get some really good scenic shots. And as like a long exposure photographer, yeah. I'm always looking for like waterways and even the foliage looks really nice because mm -hmm. it sways in the wind. So you get like this ghostly looking leaves. Oh, okay, I got you. Um, yeah, which yeah. makes the colors look even better. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and with Albion, it's kind of a unique dam. It has sort of like a step down. Yeah. So it's just interesting to capture that. Um, but yeah, with some of the long exposures, you're, you're able to have the dam in the, in the foreground, the yep. foliage in the back. So it just adds exactly. a lot more interest to the photography. Exactly. Um, but as I mentioned, you are a drone photographer as well. That's very right, accomplished yeah. one. Uh, where would you like people to know to go and shoot if they have a drone? Uh, first spot I'd go to is Albion Dam. Again, well, yeah. that's another good spot. Uh, like how you mentioned the dam, and then behind the dam you have more of the, the trees and the leaves. Yep. So you get a really cool, vibrant, and colorful um, area from that you know two to four hundred feet above like okay. ground level where you are. Um, and I. It's unmatched, like you're really, not yeah, going to yeah. find um, many places with those great and wonderful colors. Yeah. Albion Dam. Um, that's right along the Blackstone, Blackstone River. Blackstone River, yeah. 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 Um, shooting along the rivers is one of my favorite things mm -hmm. to do with a drone because you get that vast majority of just area. And now oh, okay. that we're in close to peak time, it's like the best time. Yeah. And that's going to look great. Yeah. Yeah. And Any then, other spots then? For, uh, yeah, for drone stuff, you can head up north to like Burrowville, Harrisville. Yeah, um, right oh, behind, the Harrisville Dam, right? In that yep, whole area? Yep, uh, Harrisville, is. right behind the library. You get a lot of cool foliage right, below, right behind there. It's a lot of it's like red and orange. Yep. Um, very bright. Branch River. Branch River, yeah, so. and you're going to love it. Um, mm -hmm. Other places that I like to go with my drone. Um, oh, another place that I want to get more into is East Providence. Yeah. I think that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely. On the bikeway going down there. Yeah. Um, new spots. Um, One place that, that I love to go hiking, and I'll ask you, like, I'm yeah. assuming that Lincoln Woods is a good place to go. Oh, yeah. Lincoln, yeah, Lincoln Woods is another good yeah, spot. Yeah, what do you capture there? Um, there, um, well, you have a lot of options when yeah. you're at Lincoln Woods. Yeah, this is there's, more for like handheld, I'm assuming, right? Because yep. it is a state park. Or yep, uh, handheld, but Lincoln Wood is a great spot for handheld and they have a lot of paths. Yep. So you're bound to find something different and new in each mm -hmm. spot. Um, like you have the pond, you have the beach, and then even just like on like the, the roadways, just mm -hmm. walking down, yeah. you're always gonna find stuff. And then also near like, um, Near the beach area, they have a lot of open areas with grass that you can find leaves and pick them up and do those macro photos oh, right. like yeah, I was mentioning yeah, okay. before. Um, really great spot, honestly, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Lincoln yeah. Woods is another good one. Yeah, and I mean, as, as you've kind of gathered, we're talking about a lot of places that are along waterways, you know? Yeah. So the trees just turn, you know, a little bit earlier there. They seem to just pop a little bit more. There's, yeah. you know, obviously like a nice uh, consolidation of trees there. So yeah, anywhere that you kind of see water and fortunate for us, we have a ton of water here. I mean, obviously yeah. we're carved with the Blackstone River, but we've got the Branch River and many ponds and streams yeah. and stuff. So uh, yeah, plenty of opportunities to come and shoot. And Dave's listing some, but come and find your own too and let us know where you found some of the best places to shoot. So um, 
But kind of with regard to gear, is there anything specific that you would, you know, let people know that would be helpful to capture yeah. these photos and, and make their, you know, their photography get to that next level? Yeah, so for handheld photography, I recommend having a macro lens because I okay. think foliage is trying to show as much detail. Mm -hmm. um, and having a macro lens shows you nice close-up detail that you won't necessarily get with like a wide-angle lens. Yeah, okay. Um, so definitely think about investing in a macro lens. Um, whether it be like a 50 or if you want to get like a 100 millimeter lens, um, that's a great one because it nice and it compresses the images from like the background and and like up close, so yeah, it, it okay. gives it like a nice compressed image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And filters, with, uh, you mentioned like yeah. ND filter. Like, what does the ND filter yes. do, and how does it help uh, with this type of photography? Yeah. So during the daytime, using an ND filter acts as a pair of sunglasses, essentially. Oh, okay. So you throw that in front of the lens and it blocks out all the light. So when you do a long exposure photograph, while where you set your shutter at a slower speed, mm -hmm. you get more light that's allowed to go into the camera. Even though it has sunglasses on, there's yeah. still some light coming through. Yeah. And that's how you but get- But it doesn't like blow out the photography. Exactly, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're able to capture that without it just being like a white yeah. screen. Exactly, yeah. Thing. So okay. it's, it's good to have that sunglasses on your lens. Yeah. And you can get really nice, smooth, milky photos. Um, yeah, yeah. Or like ghostly images. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're talking about camera gear. What about gear for the people that are out there shooting? Is there something that you recommend where in New England, the weather can change yeah. in an hour? Um, yeah. So is there stuff that you, you know people should bring so that they're prepared when they're out hiking or mm -hmm. you know along these, these waterways? Yeah, so since we're in the cooler months right now, uh, again, closer to winter, it's always good to carry a sweatshirt. Yeah. Um, you might find that you're cold in the start of the day and then as you're taking photos you get yeah. warm so you take it off um, and then you might put it back on on your way back to the car. I recommend having a sweatshirt or even a jacket depending yeah, on okay. your situation. Um, especially in New England weather, like you just mentioned, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to carry something around. Yeah, just be adaptable. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, also, like footwear, you know. Exactly yeah. what I was going to get to. Uh, cool. Boots. Yeah. Uh, especially out in the Blackstone Valley, it's a lot of nature yeah. um, and outdoorsy stuff. It's not always flat land, so you got to have <laughs> boots yeah, that okay. have nice straps that go all the way past your ankles so that you have the nicest stability. Uh, okay. Yeah. You don't worry about like rolling your ankles out in the woods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's stuff that, you know, maybe even waterproof is. Or, waterproof. You know, Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what I got on right now. Got some cool. North Face waterproof yeah. uh, boots. Um, my go-to whenever I go out hiking is nice. having a pair of boots. Yeah. Because you don't want to be Yeah, you just want to be prepared while you're yeah. out there. You don't want to have that perfect shot and then yeah. not be able to capture it yeah. because you're just too cold or you can't get there, you know? Or um, wet feet. Or wet, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, especially all these I waterways. I don't like wet feet at all. It's like my least favorite thing, so. Yeah, but <laughs> wear boots, be prepared. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with regards to, you know, you've, like I just said, you've got this perfect shot. Yep. But if you're an amateur photographer, like, do you have any tips on how to, like, line that up? Like, you see it in yeah. your own eye, but how do you have that translate to your camera best you can? Yeah, so one of my favorite rule of thumb for, like, composition is using the rule of third. Okay. Um, so it's like, kind of like a grid, like two horizontal lines, yep. two vertical lines. And, and sometimes they, people's cameras already have that. Yeah, that's right. right. They have that feature so that'll that show feature. you. Yep. Yeah, so you use that rule of third feature on whatever camera would it be, an iPhone, Samsung, Canon, Sony, Nikon. Yeah. Most cameras have that feature and I try to place my subject in those intersecting points because that's where our eyes tend to meet. Like the ones that are the, the, the four points that... Yep, the four yep. points that show up. Um, that's usually how I set my subjects. Okay. So I might put them on one side and have that negative space to yep. use for the background, whether it be like clouds and, you know, like a building. Okay, yeah. Yeah. But it'll draw you to one side. Exactly, yeah. Um, just make the photo more interesting. Yep, um, and using like bleeding lines is good. Like we're okay. on this uh, boardwalk and there's yeah. a lot of lines. So yeah. I would think of ways to use the lines in, in the shadows or on the wood. Yeah. Try to put those in the in the four points and maybe create like kind of like a, a pathway. Oh, okay, I hear you, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we are right now on the boardwalk that is part of the Blackstone River Bikeway here in Cumberland. Uh, we can see that the leaves are starting to change. Uh, when you're watching this, 
it's probably gonna be peak. So we highly recommend that you go and check out tourblackstone.com, go to activities and see the hiking and biking uh, tab that's there. You'll see all the spots that you can come and go out for an adventure and see where you can capture this beauty that you find here in Rhode Island's Blackstone Valley. Uh, Dave, thanks so much for sharing these tips. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Yeah, please like and subscribe. Uh, new episodes every week. Um, and yeah, come and see us in Blackstone Valley. Sweet. Thank you very much, James. Of course, man.